understand him. How can you admit that the persons who did this had no constitutional authority and still conclude that there is still a, a valid agreement? So, Pa, I hear you now mumbling to yourself. You seem like even angry that I should be talking and even citing the position of uh, Dr. Susungi uh, pertaining to what is reported that uh, Foncha and Ahijo did in Yaoundé in the presence of the Prime Minister of that side, uh, a certain Asale. So that document, Pa, wasn't that a binding document? Of course of it, was, it wasn't a binding document. You see, Foncha was acting not in his capacity as uh, a traditional schoolmaster. He was premier of the southern Cameroon government. The constitution which governed his actions was the Queen's Order in Council which established a ministerial government effective the day Nigeria got independence, 1st of October, 1960. And this was the guiding Bible of the West Cameroon Legislative Assembly. The powers over defense and foreign relations were not within the competence of the West Cameroon uh, uh, of the Southern Cameroon government. Those were reserved for Her Majesty's government in Whitehall. That is why Her Majesty's government brought the British Army and stationed a troop here in Boya and one in Bamenda in order to defend Southern Cameroon. Similarly, the question of external relations as a non-independent country was firmly under British control. And therefore, if Dr. Foncha, in exuberance, went to negotiate with Ahijo while still swearing, while having sworn allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen to respect the Constitution, he was acting ultra virus, the powers vested on him. You can see, if you are underage son, tries to sell your property when you are still alive without your concurrence, that is, that agreement with somebody who tries to buy the property is invalid. In the same manner, Ahijo was dis negotiating with Foncha as head of state of La Republic to Cameroon. Foncha was not head of state of southern Cameroon because it was still a British administered trust territory. The head of state, so-called, was the Commissioner for Cameroons, who had to promulgate all motions passed in the House of Assembly before they became law. So any conversations which touched on defense or foreign relations was outside the competence of the West Cameroon government. And therefore, if, as Dr. Susungi admits also, that he acted outside his constitutional powers, this is something for which he should have been criminally charged. And anyone who contravenes the provisions of the constitution under which he is working commits a treasonable offense. And what about the Fumban Conference? The Fumban Conference took place in July of 1961 when Southern Cameroon was still a UN trust territory under British administration. The head of state in southern Cameroon was the British commissioner. He was not invited in Fumban. It was merely a club discussion between this underaged child, Dr. John Gufoncha, and Ahijo, who was an adult. It did not bind anyone. That is really a, a cheat. Yes. The history has been cheating on... Uh Southern Cameroon. Yes, of course there are various people who would want to curry favor with La Republic du Cameroon, probably for monetary considerations. I am not one of them. Why not? The truth of the Why matter. Why not? I'm sure they have come to buy your own conscience too. Yes, they have tried, but they haven't succeeded. But why did they easily succeed with other Southern Cameroon? I don't know. It's probably because of their upbringing. I, I grew up 
in the home of an extreme prophet, a Protestant, and this has been my guiding principles throughout life. And besides, I trained as a chartered accountant in which I certified the accounts of major corporations. Now, 2 plus 2, according to mathematics, is 4. If somebody is saying, well, it is 6, you know, but all you have to do is to take away 2, I will say, no, 2 plus 2 is 4. But we're here today, 1 plus 1 now 1. You know that song? Yes, that is 1 plus 1 is song. I remember my great friend, the late um, uh, moderator of the Presbyterian Church, when he was celebrating. Oh, no, no, the right reverend. <clears throat> Uh, the very Reverend Jesse Kangson. Okay. In when he was celebrating the marriage of my daughter to uh, the son of E. K. Martin. Okay. It was at that service that he pronounced the principle of one plus one equals one. That that which he was joining together, Nobody. no one should put asunder. So one plus no, one, one has been joined into one. one. This is not the case here. Mm -hmm. If they are going, two persons are going to be joined into one, mm -hmm. there has to be an agreement. Very good. Eh? Very good. Now, that's why I'm challenging La Republic mm -hmm. and to say that if indeed you are claiming that La Republic and Southern Cameroons are mm -hmm. one and indivisible, mm -hmm. they were not part of your country when you gained independence. I have a very tough question now. Yes. I have mm -hmm. a very tough question now. Yes. You are of a very mature age and standing your own and gunning for Southern Cameroons. Yes. I have talked with um, the Paramount Chief of Boya. Yes. Um, Enderly. Yes. And I would be, I've already been working on having to meet uh, with uh, Mfon Mukete. Yes. Why are you three or those of your age? Uh, who have seen it all, done it all, been there, done that. Why are you not speaking with the same mouth? I can only speak for myself. You know, in life, people's thoughts are conditioned by their circumstances in life. It could well be that uh, the people you have mentioned are comfortable enough in the present circumstances. I'm planning on Fon Mukete though, because I've not met him yet. But at least for uh, his. Uh, oh, you know. I admire Fon Mukete a great deal, and I've had occasion to exchange a few thoughts with him. He, he believes in certain principles, and I think if you were to ask him, that even Susungi has admitted that Foncha, in signing agreements with Ahijo. Prior to the departure of the British, he was acting unconstitutionally. I am sure Chief Moketa would agree with you. He will probably only say that, well, this thing occurred some years ago. Why don't we settle? That is what he should tell the Republic to Cameroon, that let us engage ourselves into constructive dialogue in order to see if this Jomba arrangement can be repaired and converted to a real marriage. Because as you know, as a young man, uh, there are lots of young men who are keeping girls without going through the formalities of marriage. But after children has been born, the person is free to go to the parents of the girl and say, no, don't kill me, I love this girl, that's why I took her as uh, my concubine. And I have now come to okay. settle with you so that you can regularize our association to be a real marriage. And I want you now uh, to go into some amount of uh, psychoanalysis. Yes. Why do you, why me, why, how can you explain that something so pragmatic, so apparently easy, sitting and dialoguing with a people you are seemingly governing? is above Preston Paul Beer for 30 years. What could be your analysis of what holds him behind? Having propounded the false theory that the relationship between La Republic du Cameroon uh, and Southern Cameroon 
has converted southern Cameroon to be one country with La Republic to Cameroon. How do two people that you are joining together suddenly one person be, is, swallows the other one and the second person disappears? These were two entities of equal status. So Macron is trying to enter his mindset. The president of this country who for 30 years has been hearing your cry. Yes. And yet, people have died on this course. Yes. No movement. So how can you explain such a mental attitude? If, as a visitor, you come to my house and you are troublesome, the next thing I will do is I will show you the door. I say, please go, I no longer can receive you. When La Republic got independence, we were not there. If for whatever reason we are together and Southern Cameroon is complaining, I would have thought that instead of saying we are one and indivisible, President Bia will say, come, let us talk. After all, you voted to join us and let us address these matters. This is what an international tribunal has advised him. And he applied for another six months to consider what he was going to say. That six months too has long since passed and he is unwilling to engage. So what could be then the problem with a human being who is afraid of dialogue? The problem is what he is benefiting from his occupation of southern Cameroons. You know we are endowed with a lot of minerals in Bakasi. Some reports say that 10% of the gas and oil reserves are in Bakasi. And he's been exploiting that all along. That would be a major source of revenue to finance his huge developments in Kribi and so on, where he's borrowing extensively from the Chinese. Now, in those circumstances, he will find it difficult to tell this visitor who came allegedly on 1st of October to go away. He said, no, this is what Pharaoh did to the Jews in Egypt when Moses had approached him to let his people go. He looked around and he saw that the Jews were responsible for a lot of the development in Egypt. And so he told him, look Moses, if you want half of my kingdom, I will give it to you, but let these people stay and continue to work for us. Moses said, no sir, let my people go. go. And in the end, it required the assistance of God Almighty to force Pharaoh by killing the first sons of each Egyptian family and leading the Israelis. That is going to violence yes. now. Yes. Southern Cameroon, is it prepared for violence? Well, I, the, the, the time has not come for me to sound a clarion call because it will destroy a lot of valuable manpower who should inherit the country after we shall have gone. It is not a wise thing to do. So right now...